So you brought up Zig. I'm thinking about programming languages because I was reading on the Golang subreddit. In oh no, I'm scared where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. In response to uh, something that Mitchell Hashimoto said either on our show or another show where he was talking about Zig and Rust and Go and C. And his overall point was like, this is my preference for this project. Like he was very much just like, these are all great things. I, I chose Zig for Ghosty. I like Zig. And he wasn't very, uh, I was gonna say flamboyant, but that's not the word, flambation. I don't know. He wasn't in f trying to fuel any flames. Uh, he was being very level-headed and non-controversial. Of course, that doesn't mean there isn't gonna be controversy around what he said anyways, because language wars, you know, they're a thing on the internet. I believe the word you're looking for is inflammatory. Yeah, inflammatory, thank you. <laughs> All I could think of was a flamboyant and I was just, that, that paints an entirely different picture. Okay, so he said what he said and then there was a conversation that kind of keyed off on that on the Golang subreddit, which was basically kind of like, okay, it's 2025, Go, Rust, et cetera, systems languages. And there was a person named Catastrophysics, which is a nice portmanteau, I think, Catastrophysics, who said, in my humble opinion, with a lot of new offerings in terms of low-level low languages, Go feels a lot less compelling as a pick in 2025. I still love writing Golang, but compared with a few years ago, where it was almost the only sane choice out there for some domains, the landscape has changed a lot. And then the, the Molex or the Malix uh, replied and said, I, I do also agree. Having tested Zig, Rust, and Odin, Go still is great and feels nice, arguably even better than what it used to be. But nowadays, I could see some cases in which those other languages could also be viable or even superior, which was not the case a few years back. There was, of course, hundreds of other comments, but I thought those were interesting in their agreement. And neither of those either are being flamboyant or inflammatory. They're just their opinions on 2025. As gophers, of course, your new podcast, Fall Through, has kind of broadened, I think, your opportunities there. But as gophers yourselves, I'm curious your thoughts on that sentiment and the landscape of, let's just call them systems level programming languages. I don't know. General purpose programming languages in our in the year of our Lord 2025. <laughs> I, I think I would say that I would, I would say Go is a systems language, but it is more of a cloud systems language than a kind of low level systems language. Okay. I think that's where the split is. Like if you're going to go build something for the cloud that is like just kind of cloud native or at the cloud level, Go is a language you want to do that in. If you want to go lower and be close to the hardware, I think that's where Zig and Rust and these other languages fit much better because they, you know, they have that closer integration with C. They have that closer connection to the hardware. They have much more control over memory. They aren't as they aren't trying to protect you in the same ways that Go is trying to protect you. So I think that Go is still a very good systems language, but it's just like a higher level systems than I think what people have traditionally thought. And I think people have in the past just kind of bucketed all of systems together. And I think we're starting to see that they're they're splitting apart. They're becoming more nuanced, more bifurcated in, in what they are. And the languages are separating into the different parts of that to serve those communities. Is the separation garbage collection versus non? Is that the big distinguishing factor? I don't think so. I, I think that the separation is more about, uh, I think, first of all, like, who is your target audience? I think for Go, the target audience is we want to make sure that the, the super experienced programmers and engineers can write good, efficient code. But we want to make sure that average programmers can also just pick this up and run with it, can go implement things. I think with things like Rust and to some degree D Zig, these are languages that probably don't cater to the average programmer in that same way. They're very much like, no, you really need to know what you're doing. You have to want to have every single tool at your disposal. You need to understand all of these lower level concepts, and then you can go do this, do these really powerful things. So I think it's not even like about garbage collection. I mean, Go's garbage collector is, is fantastic, right? We have, I think on the high end, like at most a millisecond pause and usually much less than that. 
uh, or no, I think they changed this. Now I think it's 100 microsecond is like the longest garbage collection policy we'll have. And for most real-time systems, that is absolutely fine. I know people want to say real-time is like some super, real-time is a very broad category of things. And being able to do things at 100, with, you know, 100 millisecond delay some of the time is just not going to affect your real-time system all that much. So I think garbage collection is not the the big defining factor as far as the split here. I think it's much more about the language ergonomics itself and how the languages are designed. Do you agree, Matthew? Yeah, I, I agree overall. I think part of the, the negative attention Go is getting right now, I think has to do with the cloud repatriation effort that's going on where people are just kind of fed up with the cloud in general. And since Go is more of that cloud focused language, People, by definition, are fed up with the tools around the cloud, too, and Go just kind of gets caught up in the, in the middle. And Go, Go is a simple language, right? Like, it, there's something to be said about the average developer being able to read a piece of Go code and understand it because it's a simple language. But also, I know that it doesn't have all the bells and whistles like other languages that it's competing with does, right? Like, you don't have reduce and fold or whatever. You don't have, you know, true iterators like that or true generics. They all feel like bolt-ons to the language. And... Like, like I, I'm at Oxide, right? And we build a cloud computer. And you would think that cloud and Go go hand in hand. And that, that's very true. But most of Oxide is written in Rust. But we do have a lot of Go in the places where we have to integrate. So think like Kubernetes integrations, Terraform integrations, Packer integrations. All of that stuff is still Go. So I'm, I'm responsible for all of that at HashiCorp, or sorry, HashiCorp at Oxide. And it's like, that's all going to be Go stuff. Right? You don't write that stuff in Rust because all of the integration points are, are Go and, and have Go libraries for that. So I don't know. I think, I think the, the kind of negative attention Go is getting is somewhat warranted because it is a language that hasn't really evolved so, so much in comparison to its competitors. But it's still a good language to choose, especially if you're dealing with any sort of cloud environments or Kubernetes. Yeah, I think it's tough when simplicity is a core imperative or a principle to compete in a landscape of progress and change and advancement. When you're trying to keep it simple and that's hard to do and also backwards compatible, that's one of those things is like really strong backwards compat. And eventually that's just like you, you have no more shiny things to point to over time and people just, they get bored and want to move on. And of course, there's good reasons to, to want to move on and then to seek other languages for certain use cases. Or there's there's also career trajectory uh, to think about, right? Uh, which honestly drives a lot of our decision making is like, can I make money doing this and how much? <laughs> you know, like that's a lot of what I think developers, like the wins we're trying to sniff, even more so than like, what is purely the best technology for this particular thing I'm trying to do is like, I don't want to be investing in something that's going to be irrelevant. Or I also would rather make more money than I'm making right now. And all the up and coming jobs are TypeScript or Rust or whatever, you name it. But it's just a tough thing. Like when, when you're all about simplicity, which is go, one of those main things, when everybody wants to say, what else can you do? It's like, well, I've showed you everything. I have 25 keywords, you know, you know them all already, for instance. I think at some point the Go team is going to have to rethink their backwards compatibility promise and maybe even think about what a go-to would look like. Because if they, if they maintain this backwards compatibility is, is, is the thing and simplicity is the thing and all of these like features that we have to add have to be added in a backwards compatible way, I think they lose in the long run if they keep that mindset, personally. Mm -hmm. I think at some point they, they should reevaluate and say, we're going to do a go-to. It's going to be backwards incompatible. It's going to break, it's going to have a breaking changes but it's going to allow us to add these things to the language that we've been wanting in a way that feels better than what we're doing it today. And I think that that might be something that they want to consider at some point in the future. But I don't work on the Go team, right? I actually kind of feel the opposite. I think Go is potentially going to be the first language that undefines backwards incompatibility, right? That makes, makes it so that backwards incompatibility is not a thing at all. I think there is a very good opportunity for Go to do this with the way it set itself up so far if the Go team decides to invest in a few more tools, right? We've already, Go has pretty much already jettisoned the entire idea. I mean, it was never really an idea 
that Go version two would ever be a thing. It was just a name to give to kind of next gen features. And with the way that modules work now, where the version in the module dictates what feature set you're going to use, it is possible to change the language in the future in ways that would be backwards incompatible in another language, but continue being forward, but continue being compatible because the compiler can switch out its tool chain at will. So yeah, you can still compile that old code using your current Go command. It's just gonna go grab a different tool chain and compile the code with that. And that, you know, I guess technically you could say that's backward incompatible or backward, you know, uh, backward breaking change. But for the consumer, it doesn't really feel that way at all. And there's a small effort to take some of the ideas from Go's distant path past with Go Fix and with this tool called EG or Example to actually be able to rewrite code for you. So if you do make a breaking, uh, backward breaking change, the code will just be rewritten automatically to the new thing, which I think also really reduces the amount of like what is a backward breaking change. If you just build that into the compiler as well, and the compiler can just do this for you automatically, then it can just look at the context of how, what is this module code written in? Oh, it's in this version and we have this other version. I know how to map these two versions together so I can just automatically translate it. And you just reduce or remove almost all of the backwards incompatibility things that you might come up with. And I think if you add that with the ability to do the V2 modules, you really just remove the need to ever create something like Go2. Like I don't know what would be in Go2 that would be something we can't use the current tools or some of the upcoming tools to remediate. This is true. I, I keep forgetting that they're becoming more load bearing on the Go mod file and like the Go directive in there and the tools directive now. They're they're using that the versions listed there for tool chain like you know conditionals. I keep forgetting about that. And that, that is true. They can they could probably get a long way with that, especially since the tool chain's built into the language. You don't think though that like iterators and generics are kind of they feel out of place in the language syntactically? You don't feel like they're just kind of too overly verbose or not a first class citizen, so to speak? I think there's there's definitely some warts around them. But I think that's mostly because it's it's difficult to design generics or iterators that work well. I think people are very used to the things that are already in languages, so they're much more likely to overlook how awkward those things can be. And since Go hasn't had them and they're trying to add them, it's this new thing. So you have people on both sides being like, this isn't as good. Like people that didn't have them are like, why do we need these things? And people that are used to them in other languages want them to look like those things in other languages mm -hmm. and don't like that they don't look like that. So that I think that's a lot of where their problem comes from. Like I like generics for the things that it does. I want something like a sum or a union type. I think the language badly needs it, but I don't think generics are bad because we don't have sum or union types. Or I don't think generics are bad because you can't attach a method, can't have a generic method, right? I think it would be nice if we could do those things. I understand why we can't. It's a little bit of annoyance that you that you can't, but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's a show-stopping thing that people usually make it out to be like, oh, this is so terrible, we can't do this thing. Yeah, that's fair. I, I would say that it like that's that's where I'm okay if if there, someone were to say here's go to I'm gonna take all of those things that are kind of warty in the language and like clean up their syntax for like a go to I'd be okay with that. Is it something I think is gonna happen? Probably not, but I'd be okay if if they announced that. I mean, even with, with the way Go mod works, you can even have syntactic changes to the language, right? That's not something that can't be done while still keeping the Go backward compatibility system, really go backward and forward compatibility system. Mm -hmm.